Ahoy there folks, I'm Captain Benzi and welcome to another video for Eve Echoes. In today's video I want to talk to you all about exploration and some of the changes that have happened and whether or not this is a good thing, if it's a bad thing, is it enough, is it too much? You know, we're going to talk about the changes that happened in the May industrial update in regards to exploration and we're going to talk about how this has actually affected everything plus just sort of rounding up my general feelings about exploration in general. Now this is going to be pretty much a podcast style video, so I'm just going to be talking. There will be some graphics on screen um, to sort of pinpoint certain aspects and showcase things, um, sort of supplying evidence, etc. But for the most part, you can listen to this kind of as if it were a podcast. Now, ultimately, if you do enjoy this video and find it useful, please let me know by hitting a like on it, subscribe to the channel for all things Eve Echoes, ding that notification bell to never miss an upload, and if you do want to go the extra mile to help support this channel, there is both a Patreon page you can pledge to support there, earn some exclusive merch and get your name in the end of every video, and of course our Redbubble merchandise store where you can pick up some cool loot and gear there as well. Anyway, all that said and done, let's talk exploration. Now, again, before we jump in, my personal thoughts and opinions here. There are folks out there who disagree with me on certain aspects of this, and we'll kind of cover that as we hit each point. Now, exploration, as I'm sure many of you know, is kind of the thing I've been looking forward to most in EVE Echoes since the game launched. In EVE Online, I'm part of the Signal Cartel, which is a big scanning and exploration group. Um, it's always been the thing I really enjoy most, that flying around, finding new things. Um, and in fairness, like a lot of people ask me, why doesn't Benzie do more in the way of PvP content? Well, there's two, re there's multiple reasons. I'm not just going to say two. There's multiple reasons, but the main reasons are that A, when you see Captain Benzie in local, that in Nullsec usually results in a lot of people chasing me. I don't get good PvP footage because you have a lot of people shooting at me. I can't showcase how good, say, a Crewer or Succubus or Dromiel is if I can't get actually good fights because as soon as I find a fight that's remotely useful, four other people jump in on me in a logout, a logout trap or whatever. In addition to that as well, when it comes to solo roaming in low sec or high sec, it often comes at odds of being like a, uh, a content creator that's trying to educate and help the community that I'm then blowing other players up. Now I know that PvP obviously is a big part of EVE, but for me personally, it's always felt really bad to blow someone up and then go, oh, you know, dude, I, I watch your videos, you've been helping me out so much, and now you've just cost me my ship, to the point that when I PvP, I tend to pay to replace people's ships. Which, you know, it, it's not necessarily a good feeling. The third point is simply, I'm just not that good at it. If you compare me to some of the other like content creators out there who are doing PvP stuff, well, it's not really my thing. So, exploration was always the big thing I was looking forward to. I was disappointed when it originally launched. I think the scanners were really cool and I love the new sort of scanning minigame. I love how, you know, EVE Online has its own probe scanning where you move your actual probes through space and try to pinpoint locations. It's so in-depth. I just don't think it would really translate here to EVE Echoes in the sense of a mobile game. So I like that they did the whole wave resonance and that you are, you know, isolating these different waves in order to find the, the site or the ship or whatever it is that you're looking for. I really like that. It's a lot of fun. I thoroughly enjoy it and I think that's really really cool. Now the way that scanning was implemented in my opinion could have been done better and it still has a couple of hiccups in it. Scanning as a as an as a career it starts around about tech level 7 because you can't get the wide resonance scanners working before then you are licensed at tech level 7 to use most of the scanning equipment. Um, but ultimately it is an incredibly expensive foot in the door for exploration. If you want to be exploring, you really need to have a ship with at least three mid slots. And if we were to just jump into the ship tree early on, and I'm going to use the Minmatar ship tree just because it's the first one here. By the time you hit tech level seven, you don't really have many good options. I mean, heck, the only Covert Ops frigate you've had at this point is the Probe Covert Ops or the Heron, Magnate, and Imicus Covert Ops with only two mid slots. If you are exploring, you are going to need three mid slots. Otherwise, you need to dock up every time you find a site that isn't the one you want. It Imagine finally scanning down a site after looking for one, finding that it's a relic site and realizing you've got a data analyzer fitted. You're going to have to rush to your nearest station, swap across, then by the time you hit that site, someone else is already there. Every second really counts. So at this point early on, ultimately, if you're going to be doing exploration at tech level 7, you're going to be using a standard covert ops cruiser. 
These are the Tech Level 7 Covert Ops Cruisers. You've got the Covert Ops Cloaking Device. You've got three mid slots. You've got everything you need there, but they're not cheap ships when you're a Tech Level 7 pilot, and they're quite expensive to lose. They're also fairly slow moving compared to using a frigate. Once you hit tech level 8, things do open up with the interceptor frigates. You've got the three mid slots you need. These are fast, they're fairly cheap, they're small, um, and they have the ability to avoid gate camps, of course. So it's really tech level 8 where exploration starts to become a thing. Um, obviously, you do have the Astero at tech level 7 as well, but that is a very expensive ship for what it does, and it's expensive because the hull parts are expensive. The, uh, the, the materials that you use to reverse engineer the blueprints, the uh, sisters of debris. You get those through faction war games, and ultimately that isn't an issue in and of itself. Those need to be expensive because that is how faction war games players make their money, by getting these difficult things and actually selling them on the market for a fairly lucrative fee. Yes, it means that the Astero is very expensive. So at tech level 7, you're going to be flying a Covert Ops Cruiser. At tech level 8, you might jump back into an Interceptor. And then by the time you hit tech level 10, yes, you've got the Explorer frigates, you've got the Tech 10 Interceptors, and you've still got the Astero. And things make just a little bit more sense at that point in time. Ultimately, though, it's a fairly expensive ship to get early on. Then, of course, you need a wide resonance scanner. These are not too expensive on the market, but a good one does cost you a fair bit of risk. It's the analyzers where things start to fall apart here. Now, analyzers are incredibly expensive because the Meta Level 5 and the Meta Level 8 ver uh, variants drop as part of the boxes in uh, storyline encounters. That's the only way you can really get these. So it's good news for uh, anyone who is running those storyline encounters that if you get a box that has a meta level 8 analyzer in it, you know you can sell it for a pretty penny on the market. And for a PvP -er as well, if you manage to catch an explorer, blow them up, and either of their analyzers drop, you can make good money selling those. So again, not necessarily a problem, it's just a fact that to get into exploration, the gear that you are required to really get out the door is fairly expensive. Now ultimately, I have a chart that I use a lot on this. I created a chart um, for the Catskull Academy and I've showcased this around a few times. Um, I'll put it on screen now. This is the Relic and Data Site Catskull Academy um, infographic. Now on this, you'll see that ultimately, when you're scanning, if you're sticking to high sec, you only need an exploration, a, a source radius of 230 meters or higher, which a standard explore, uh, explorer wide resonance scanner can get on its own before you've even included adding uh, like rigs or the hull bonuses or uh, skill bonuses, the explorer wide resonance scanner is already sufficient to find every site in high sec on its own. If you want to go into null sec, uh, sorry, into low sec, you're going to need to go down as low as 120. And if you want to go all the way out into null sec, it needs to go down to 75, right? Okay, so with that established, you can kind of get away with lower level scanners early on and not having heavy scanning, um, heavy scanning skills because you can rig for it and you can use some hulls that will help you reach those bonuses. The analyzers are where you get a problem though. If you're sticking to high sec, then yeah, you can have info shards, comm towers, debris, and rubble. These are only difficulty one and difficulty two boxes. They only need a difficulty two, uh, a strength two scanner, which a Mark Nine will do. But if you want to head into uh, into low sec, suddenly you start seeing things like the mainframes and the remains in these uh, in these sites as well. Those are difficulty 3 boxes which require a strength th uh, 3 analyzer. Now the first strength 3 analyzer is the meta level 5 ones and these are fairly expensive. If you even want to go into null sec and there is some crossover, some of the null sec sites appear in low sec and some of the low sec sites appear in uh, sort of safer null sec. Um, you start seeing those difficulty four boxes, the ruins and the data banks. Those require a strength level four analyzer or a Sisters of Eve ship like the Astero or the Stratios or one of the Tech 10 Explorer frigates, which means if you want to be exploring in null sec, you absolutely need to have a one of the meta level eight scanners unless you are flying an Astero. 
Like literally that is going to be your only way out of it. The skills, you can be full 555 in exploration and hacking. You still won't be able to open those boxes in Nullsec if you do not have a meta level, a meta level eight scanner with strength of four or a meta level five scanner with strength of three and a ship that has the plus one strength hull bonus like the Estero or the Tech 10 Explorer frigates. Again, the Estero is very expensive um, early on if you're getting into scanning um, and the Explorers are only at Tech 10, so if you're not a Tech 10 player, the Estero really is your only option for Null Sec exploration. And if you're in a Null Sec Alliance, it sucks having to go all the way to High Sec and Low Sec, flying around and then coming all the way home again after. So you find yourself basically sticking to High Sec and Low Sec until you hit Tech 10, or until you can afford an Estero. Now, once you even find a site, we still have issues. Now, if I jump back onto the main screen here, and go into my fitting. This is personally here on live. This is my Astero, and if I'm jumping around in high sec, uh, low sec, or null sec, I'm absolutely fine. If I open up my scanner here, you can see this is a. Uh, this goes all the way down to 73.31 meters. I can find every single possible site in the game here, and the smallest site is 75 meters. And if I go to the data analyzers, you can now see analysis strength is five here because I've got strength four ones on an Astero. Now, you'll notice that the analysis success rate on this, even with 554 in hacking, 555 is on the way, and in an Astero, I only have 29.6% analysis success rate. Now, that means, especially on the higher difficulty boxes, the difficulty four boxes, for example, I may be orbiting and using this to try and open those boxes, and I still don't necessarily find anything. It is possible with, I've got 30% success rate here, and ultimately you get maybe 10 attempts at something, so that's 10 rolls to try and get 30% or lower basically. You know, I'm trying to get a 30% chance, and I've got 10, maybe 12 attempts at doing this. It is entirely possible that with maxed out exploration skills, with the highest level analyzers in the game, and with one of the best exploration vessels in the game, that you still are not capable of getting all the loot, because it is purely random chance. You're going to fly around in space, you'll find a relic site or a data site, you'll jump into it, you'll use that analyzer, and discover that it's only a 30% chance of success, which means that ultimately, you still run the very real risk of just not getting anything out of those boxes. Beyond this as well, I've talked about in the past how one of the problems with exploration is that you don't necessarily know there are going to be sites near you when you undock. If you are a miner and you undock, you know there is going to be a mining belt within the region you are in. If you are a ratter, you know that there is going to be a cosmic anomaly within the region that you're in. Or if you're in high sec, you know you can do news encounters and guarantee income that way. If you are an explorer, it is entirely possible that every single site in the region you're in, if not multiple regions, is on cooldown. Up until recently, the respawn timer of a, a relic or data site was a 0.4% chance additive every hour, which means once you cleared a site, it was a uh, an hour later, there's a 0.4% chance that that site would respawn. If it doesn't respawn on the second hour, it's now 0.8 chance that it'll respawn. On the third hour, it's a 1.2 chance, so on so forth. This means that by the time you hit eight hours after the site originally was completed, there is a 3.2% chance that that site would actually be there again. This caps out at 100% after 108 hours, which is four and a half days. So just as a theory here, bear with me and think about this. If you and your friends just went one per system into every single region, uh, every single system in your region, you all scanned at the same time, you all found the sites, you went in, you cleared them. Now, two days later, it's entirely possible that none of those sites have respawned. Now, it's statistically improbable, but at four days, it's entirely possible that none of those sites have respawned, meaning the content simply isn't there. No matter how hard you look for it, the content is not there. This has always led me to be a little bit bitter about exploration in Eve Echoes, because it's fun to do in theory. 
Just when you spend hours looking for sites and not finding anything because everything's on cooldown, then you finally do find a site, and even though you're pretty much maximum skills in a ship specifically designed for this one exact purpose, you still come across a situation where the loot boxes, you aren't successful in opening them, and you lose the loot, right? It, it kind of sucks. But there were some changes in the May industrial update. Now Cloud had teased to me that there were actually some industrial, uh, some exploration things coming to the game um, later this year. I wasn't expecting it to be in the May industrial update though and it really actually quite surprised me. Now the main changes to exploration, I'm not going to talk about loot rejigging because to me the problem has never been the loot. Yes, okay you can spend six hours um, flying around and you find nothing. You might spend ten minutes flying and find a site that's got a billion-esque worth of loot in it. This does happen. It's extraordinarily rare though. The point for me has always been that when you undock for exploration, you may not find anything. And even if you do find something, it's entirely possible that you don't get anything useful simply because the box blows up because it's all RNG. Exploration is completely RNG based in EVE Echoes. So the changes that they added were supposedly 10 new sites down in Nullsec, going from 0. Point, I think it's 0. 0.8, 0. 0.9 and minus 1.0, so minus 0. 0.8, minus 0. 0.9 and minus 1.0, um, a load of new sites could spawn out there. They reduced the respawn rate, uh, respawn timer by 22, uh, by 33%, sorry, and they changed the Astero, the Stratios, and the Explorer frigates. So now, if we jump into looking at the Astero briefly, it's the same for the Explorer frigates. We now have this plus one analyzer analysis strength, and that is kind of useful because it means that now, if you want to go into a strength four site, I only need a meta level three, uh, sorry, a, a strength three analyzer, a strength three analyzer on an Astero is a strength 4 analyzer and thus can open everything. But then they have these new sites and again the new sites I'm going to pull up that graphic because I've actually added them to this now. The hidden science outpost and the hidden survey site so hidden Gurista science outpost or hidden angel survey site depending on what region you're in. These have a scan resolution of 75 meters, which means they are exactly the same as the smallest sites were previously, which were the Central Pirate Data Processing Center and the Ruined Pirate Crystal Quarry. Those were the smallest sites at 75 meters beforehand, we now have the two hidden sites as well. Now ultimately by keeping it at 75 meters, this kind of makes sense, because if you have an Astero fully skilled, and I'm going to drop this graphic quickly to have a look at my Astero here, if I go into the rigs just to prove a point here, Warp Core Optimizer, Warp Core Optimizer, and Warp Core Optimizer. I have no scanning rigs on this Astero, and if I go into my skills here, and then into Natural Science and Exploration, you'll see that I have Exploration, Space Exploration Technology, all the way up at Expert Level 5. With all of that, using the best scanner in the game, 73.31 meters. So anything lower than 73.31 meters would actually require even an Astero to start rigging for scan, which I get it, it's a little bit strange. That said, I wouldn't have minded it. I wouldn't have minded if you'd have to put one rig onto a fully skilled Astero in order to get to a particular site, because that would stop people flying interceptors um, for these best sites. It would mean that if you want to access the very best sites in the game, Game, you would need to have a scan res uh, lower than an interceptor could actually go due to the fact that the Astero and the Covert Ops, uh, sorry the Explorer frigates, actually have those bonuses uh, to the Resonance Simulator minimum scan radius. Ultimately, I would have been okay with that, but it didn't end up that way. We've got a situation where 73.31 is the smallest that an Astero can go without rigs, assuming you have skills, and the site only requires a 75 meter, so cool, we can find them. But we were told they would have level 5 boxes in that would require meta level 8 scanners, met, sorry, meta level 8 analyzers, and the bonus from the Astero, the Stratios, or the... Um, or the Explorer frigates, and that was really cool because again, it meant that there was a reason to actually fly those particular ships instead of just a tricked out interceptor. Unfortunately, I can confirm that is not the case. I've been flying around for a few weeks, well, for, for a week now. I found a few of these myself, and I was given the codes on Fulmination as well, finally, so I could make them all spawn numerous times. I have spawned every single one of the science outposts, so that is Angel, Guristus, Blood Raider, Sancha, and Serpentis science outposts. I, I spawned each of those ten times each. 
I then did the same for the hidden pirate survey sites, 10 times each, so 10 hidden angel survey sites, 10 hidden Gurista survey, survey sites, 10 hidden Serpentis uh, survey sites, 10 hidden Sanchez survey sites, and 10 hidden Blood Raider survey sites. And I can tell you every single time they come with the information you can see on screen now. Two com t in the hidden, uh, hidden science outposts, two comm towers, which are difficulty two boxes, two mainframes, which are difficulty three boxes, and two data banks, which are difficulty four boxes. There's no such thing as a difficulty five box in these. It is just difficulty four. Now, I tried these and I did double check just to make sure that the naming conventions weren't just being screwed with. I jumped in with a ship that could only open level two, and sure enough, it could only open the comm towers. I then jumped back up and I swapped to a slasher two interceptor with the meta five analyzer and I could get both of the mainframe boxes. I then jumped back out and I swapped to a standard um, meta level eight, uh, meta level eight analyzer, jumped back in and I could open the two data banks. So no, the level five boxes do not exist in either of these. And the same is then true when we go into the relic sites as well, the hidden survey sites. Those contain four remains, which are difficulty three three boxes and two ruins which are difficulty four boxes and they are confirmed to still be difficulty three and difficulty four. If you're running an interceptor that has meta level eight scanner, uh, meta level eight analyzers, you can still get every site in the game. You'll be easy enough to scan it down at 75 meters and all of the boxes are difficulty four or lower. So you can 100% do anything. This means that the Astero, this means that the Probe Explorer, this means that the Stratios, these ships are only useful, really that, that new bonus that they have added of the plus one strength to the analyzers is actually only useful if you're trying to cheap out, basically. So me flying an Astero, there's no point me using the meta level eight analyzers. I may as well just use the meta level five analyzers and have a cheaper ship in case it gets lost. That's the only reason currently for that analyzer analysis strength. Now, is this intentional? Or is this just uh, like how it's been implemented? Well, I don't know. I literally figured all this out today. I'm making this video now. I am contacting the devs about this and saying, hang on, the patch notes did say that there would be new difficulty five boxes. They don't exist. The new sites do not contain difficulty level five boxes. They still only contain four, three or two which is not sufficient, you know, to warrant necessarily using one of these. And that's a that's a real shame. That is a real shame because it was nice to know that for us explorers who didn't want to be flying an interceptor, that our ships were actually genuinely better. There was a reason to fly ours instead of the others. Now, you, there's no real reason for me to fly an Astero. I may as well be flying a Slasher Interceptor, the Tech 8 version, with a load of the rigs um, and just the metaphor uh, analyzers there, which is equipment I've got, but it would be a cheaper ship overall in case I lose it. That's kind of the disappointment here on that one, but it's not all doom and gloom. Now, one of the other things that they did note in the patch notes, as I said earlier, is that 108 hour possible respawn timer was reduced by 33%. That takes it down to approximately 72, if you do the math, 72 hours. And I don't believe that they've kind of just reduced it by exactly 33%. I believe the patch notes are rounded. So I believe that the sites now operate on that same respawn system that they did before, but now at a 72 hour to hit 100% guarantee, which means it's only 36 hours, um, a day and a half basically, for a site to be 50% chance of respawning. And I've held off judgment on this because it's not the fix I've been asking for. I'd rather we use the EVE Online system, which guarantees a respawn within two minutes, but never in the same system. Somewhere else in the same region gets the site, but it's exactly two minutes after. Um, it means you can't farm it as one explorer, um, you do have to still be moving around, but it does guarantee that even if someone just cleared a site in front of you, there is still a chance that you will find more sites. There's nothing worse than flying through a region and being one system behind a scanner and just finding that they hit everything just before you do, and that does happen. 
So this drop of the timer then, 72 hours now down from 108, it's a big old drop and it does seem to have made a difference actually. I'm, I'm not going to say it's perfect, I still don't like the fact that when I undock it is theoretically possible that zero content exists. To me that's just not great. I still don't like the fact that the, an, uh, the analyzers and the decoding is still 100% based on RNG. I flew a load of sites this morning and I had a couple of boxes blow up even though I I've got maximized skills in everything, I'm using the best gear possible, and I'm using the best ship for this. And I was still finding that some of the boxes are blowing up on me, and that's just not fun. It shouldn't be the case. However, over about an hour this morning, this was my loot pile. And the estimated cost here, I've taken out the things that I normally carry around in my cargo hold as well, like the fuel. So the estimated value of all the stuff I managed to find this morning was about 264 million. That's flying through high sec and low sec. So that's not as big as some of the other hauls I've had, but even if the haul is lower, so the fact that I was actually finding stuff is a lot more fun to me. It, to me, the worst part is spending two hours just flying around and getting literally nothing to show for it. I would rather have bad loot than no loot, and that's the key point here. But at least I'm finding loot now. And okay, some of this does really annoy me. Like, for example, these new Blueprint Secret Trafficking containers. These look really awesome on surface level. I mean, once you check what's inside these, it's like, hell yes, Exhumer Rig Blueprints? That would be amazing. We would love to have the Exhumer Rig Blueprints or Mining Drone Blueprints or Exhumer Drone Blueprints, these kind of things. A lot of really cool loot in there, but you have to buy keys with real money. Aurum. You only get those keys through Aurum, which means as an explorer, I either sell these boxes on the market or I have to pay real world money to open the box and then sell that on the market. That sucks. That really, really sucks. Like that's not fun at all. And the boxes just aren't worth it otherwise because people don't want to be forced to spend real world money on a chance of obtaining something that they want. I mean, if we just jump back into that for a second, yeah, okay, the Exhumer Rig Blueprint, the Mining Drone Blueprint, the Exhumer Drone Blueprint are all really cool, but a lot of the other stuff there is pretty, eh? And what are the chances? I had some Aurum spare, uh, spare from the Concord Pass purchase earlier, um, so I did actually open two of these, and all I got were these extra large device improvement mediums um, in one of them. The other one did come with um, an industrial integrated box, um, and sorry, not an industrial integrated box, an Exuma drone box, and that blueprint did sell for a lot of ISK. But the funniest thing was, the amount of Aurum it cost me to buy the key would have got me more ISK on the market had I just sold the Aurum as Plex. That's disappointing. Like that, that in itself is disappointing. So it's a bit of a mixed bag at the moment, Exploration. Is Exploration worth it? Well, it's definitely more worth it than before in the fact that you can actually find the sites and you're not going to die of boredom out in the cold void of space anymore. But it's still got problems. It's still got problems that I'm hoping I can address by talking to the developers. Now, because I haven't sent feedback yet, I'm waiting until this video goes up and then I'll put the feedback out tomorrow morning. So if you are watching this video and thinking, actually, you know, I've been into doing some exploration, I've got some feedback and some ideas and that, please let me know in the comment section down below. I'd love to actually give a big amount of feedback to Cloud and the guys about this. I think positively, yes, the fact that there are more sites now is good. I do think those sites should still be spawning in a different mechanic rather than just a lower timer. I think the loot on the most part is okay, just I think that the trafficking containers, the fact that you cannot buy the keys with anything other than Aurum is really disappointing because it means a load of my loot here is stuff that I can't access unless I buy the keys with real money. That, that really sucks. Um, yeah, it's a load of level 1 rig blueprints and stuff, but I'm going to make these. I've got a load of rig stuff sitting at Jita. I like to make the rigs and then sell them on the market, and it's a good amount of ISK. That's a decent amount of ISK for an hour's work this morning. If I were ratting in Nullsec with my battleship, I'd probably earn a little bit less than that in that same time frame. And the fact that I've got rid of my battleship skills now ultimately means I've forced myself to go exploring more and fl fly the ships I like and do the content that I like to do. I'm just glad that finally the game is actually beginning to support me actually doing that content. It's not there yet, but we're getting there. 
Anyway, folks, those are my thoughts and opinions now on exploration and how things have changed. Let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below so that I can give feedback to the developers um, and give a full representation of what the community thinks on this. Thank you for watching this one right the way through to the end, folks. Happy sailing and see you in New Eden.